Hi everyone. Now I've been tying a few caddis pupa. Uh, this is a McPhail caddis pupa, but with the organza body. Now uh, the wool traditionally, I would, normally I would tie them with uh, a yarn. Uh, I dyed mainly yellow. But this is the this caddis pupa is a great fly for any time really. But it's tied by the. I'll show you the colour. I'll show you the depth. This is a ganza rib here. You can see that Cahill light colour. It's a great colour in any fly, any nymphs really. Uh, whether it be a mayfly nymph uh, or in this case the caddis pupa. It works extremely well. Now the colour, just to show you, is this one here. And you can see it there. Uh, it's a ganza rib. This is 10mm rib, so it's 10 10mm wide. Uh, and it's got, obviously got the woven edges you can see and it's gold. This is, and they get this 50 yards last your lifetime. You never use it all. Now I'm going to show you how to actually prepare the, the, the organza. Now I cut a length off, a good length, about maybe six inches or so. I usually just catch the very edge of the, the ribbon. Now I've got a long pair of scissors. These are yeah, dressmaker scissors. And what I do is I catch it in the eight, one edge and I run the scissors, I cut right up the side. Now when you're trimming Follow the tips of the scissors. Don't follow the cutting edge. Now I want it quite close to the the edge of the the woven edge of the the ribbon itself. Now I'll obviously use up the other side of this as well. Now make sure this is neat enough. Now what I'm going to do is my dubbing needle. Now I don't know if you can see it, but what I'm, there's a the running fibre, the fibre that runs the length of the ribbon we've got to take these out so that we've just got the fine fringes I would call it so I just use my dubbing needle to take them out just quite easy especially when it's quite close to cut to the side of the, the woven edge make sure you get them all out And then remove it. Now I'm just going to just check I've got them all. It's important that you do check that you've got them all because when you wind the, the ribbon uh, it comes away. Obviously you've got to have good eyesight. Just chevel check and there's nothing there. That's fine. So basically that's it trimmed. Now it's, as I say it's not very long, very wide, sorry. Uh, the length of the, this edge, even if it's up and down, it's not too bad at that. Uh, I mean, I cut a length away that I can form, I can get at least maybe two flies out of this. So I'm going to cut away here. Uh, get my straight scissors. Take away the edge. And yeah, I need a, a good, around about the six mil or so, where it's mainly just the, the woven edges there, if you can see. As I say, it's only maybe a uh, mil and a half and fibre length, two at the most. You can always trim it once you put it on. Now I'll just put my hook into the vise. The hook I'm using this is a full mill hook. It's a size 14. Uh, it's just basically a check nymph. It's a nice barbless hook. It's a good grub shape like. It's a nice, it's a good way of getting a fly, a nice shape in it. Now I'm using to, you can use a wire to weight the fly or you can use a sled tape. This is from, this is a a 3M product, it's used for electro plating, but you can buy spools of it or you can buy lengths of it. Now I've got some away, now you take away the backing. So I say we're going to weight the fly, so you can start at the back, just come up, and I want to stop and line with the point of the hook, and at that point of the, I can start to come back down. Two thirds of the way, break it off, that to the side from another fly and they do a better job at breaking it off. Just use your nail, it will break. And use the back of your nail just then to flatten it. And this that adds a bit of weight to the fly. Now I've pushed this without weight, it still works. Uh, and I've used it just copper wire wound on to form the add weight as well. It works that's what's true. So it's worth doing that way, uh, using the copper wire as well. Now the thread I'm going to be using is the light cahill. Now I've waxed the thread, 
Now I'm going to put down a layer of thread onto the hook and onto the lead. I'm just going to quickly take the thread down, as you can see, once I get to the back, I start to come back up, I'll break away the waste, and then I just basically tidy things. Uh, the underbody of this fly is the thread, so I don't mind going down and coming back up. Covering it as well as you can, it will be fine. And then take the thread back up to the eye. Now about a mil and a half from the eye, I use this nylon here, this is a heavy nylon. Now we'll come in a wee bit closer, but you can see it there anyway. This is just a 12 pound nylon, it's, a, it's called sea, uh, sea Strike, sorry. When you're in the shop, you, in a large shop, you'll see this type of nylon. You get it in different colours, there's a ready colour as well. It's a visual type nylon. And uh, just take a length off. And now I get a pair of tweezers. Now I usually offer it this way. Now these are pointed, these tweezers. You can see. Now I'm going to come in a wee bit closer so you can see what I'm actually doing. Now, basically, put them into the tweezers. You want about now, depending on how wide the eyes you want apart, depending on the, you can come further down if you want them really wide apart and the bigger fly. Or on this size, you're looking around not too far, and you need enough nylon either side so when you melt it, it actually forms a, a ball of nylon to give the impression of an eye. Now this is a fibre optic as you can see there, I mean, the light hitting it. This is what gives it a good aiming point. You sell a, set a lighter and then you just if you melt it towards the side. Just let that cool, turn it around. And that should form the eyes you can see there. Just allow them to cool down. I usually then offer it to the, the hook with a couple of turns on one, one side of the eye, two or three turns anyway, and then basically then allow them to sit, bring them up, you want them evenly. Then I'll just make sure that even though you say it's right in the centre, they'll figure eight through. Build it up, sorry, fingers in the way. And that light catches these eyes and comes through. You can see there, and that's fine. Now, what I want to do now is wind towards the back of the hook. Just before I get to the back, I'm going to get my rib, my ganser rib. Now, it is a rib as well as the part as the body. So, basically, we catch this on the way down. Now make sure you've got enough at the back for a turn or so. So when you tie it on, you've got at least a turn. And then come back up, mill and a half or so. For the scud or the back, I'm using what they call scud back. This one here. Uh, it's basically a brown scud back. And uh, from here line. Now I have a piece lying on my desk. Now, I have tied this one before, it is an old video. Uh, not this there's that colour combination, it's with the yellow, uh, but this is a great fly, so I'm tying some, and I thought, well, I'll show you how to do it. I'll make a better video. So I'm just cutting this cut back into point. Makes it easier to actually catch. And when you catch it on the top, so we kind of turn, I don't know if you can see that, but just caught it. And then I'm going to wind towards... The, the organza rib, and then when I'm, I don't want to be right up next to it, I want to be leave a space so I get a turn, and then I want to work my way back to the, the top, and once I let the thread go, it should be in line with the point of the hook. Now when I'm tying the original McPhail caddis, I remove the thread, so I'm going to do this again, this makes it easier to form the body. You can actually wind the thread back on, trim that away. Now I'm going to ch change to a brown, a dark brown thread. 
once I come back up, so I'm just going to show you that it's there. Is that brown? You could, I used the other way, I just use, you could cover it with a pen without taking the thread off or changing the thread. But anyway, what we're going to do now is form the body. So just bring the scud back up on top, and then we do a turn at the back. And then bring the scud back, slide it towards the back, and then we do two turns, one, two, working our way up. Catch it. Just basically, you've got to swap hands here, get your scud back, just stretch your scud back out, I'll show you once I bring this over. We do a turn, so basically a rib. And then we do another two turns, working our way up, stretch it out slightly, and do a turn. There we bring this round, you, know, you can see it there. But anyway, there's the uh, now we're going to be trimming the, the organza as well. So that's two turns there. So we're going to three turns now, because as we've got, it gets slightly wider. Let's make a space for it to come through, catch it on the top. Single turn, and then we wind. Three turns down. Now at this point I get my brown thread. Just bring it beside my finger thumb, bring the thread through it. So I'm holding the thread. Just bring this up. Trim away the base. I'm going to catch on the organza rib. Make sure, make sure that's secure. Trim that away. You can bring over a scud back. Catch it on. Now that way we should be in line with the pointer hook. So make sure you three or four turns now. I'll show you the boy the back now. Now you can trim. You never get it exactly right, but we can trim this now just so you can see the scud back a bit better. Shows a curved pair of scissors. You can actually see it better at this point. So basically, it's just like a tapered cut, if you want to call it. Now the the organza. It's amazing in the water. Uh, I'm just trimming a wee bit here. You can trim it once you finish the fly as well. I'm just looking at the sides. Now that looks not too bad. Don't trim it all the way because it, it works. It, it, even if it, once it goes in the water, it changes it slightly. It can make it more translucent. And when you're happy with that, you can. I usually take up a wee bit, the scud back, and then I fold it back, and I make sure that it's going to start where. I, my last turn of the, the ganza rib was there. It's perfect, it's ideal. Then we want to get some uh, brown partridge. Brown partridge feather. Don't use the small ones, use the kind of bigger ones up. What I'm doing here is I'm taking away what I don't need. I'm going to cut a V into the fibre to show you there. There we are. Now that should be at least reach the back of the hook. We can put it down either side, I don't even see that. So I'm going to tie this in down either side like that. I just use the shank to separate them. Just kind of bring it in. Hold either side of the scud back. Come round two or three turns. Basically just to hold it. That's fine. And this gives the impression of legs and the wing case. Now my side's fine. I wonder what this side's like. That's fine. Lengthwise looks okay. Once you're happy you can then trim away. Make sure it's secure. Now for the thorax, you can, believe it or not, you can actually use black on this colour body, this body, uh, as well as obviously brown. Uh, brown is one of the main colours I've used. Now, uh, 
I'm using a, a, a brown seal spur, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it in with this here uh, peacock dub it's called, it's from Vineyards and uh, you can see it's got a twist of light there it's very opal like, uh, it's a really really good colour now it certainly catches the light now, it's quite simple to mix, you just blend it into your fingers now there's the same uh, this is seals far, but with some of the flash blended through it. Now you can use a coffee grinder, which I would do as well as do it by fingers. Now what I'm going to do is that basically I'll apply it, put the dubbing on. Now you see where the thread's sitting; it's sitting at the back of the eye. I'm just going to work it up from there to the, the thorax cover or to the scud back. So be quite loud, and don't be shy with it. And bring a thread through, just take away some of the dubbing. Now you can take the dubbing to the front, but I'm going to leave it off and just use the thread as the, the front part of the head. Now at this point here, it, it does pay for you to take your time. Uh, you will catch one or two fibres and they will want to go forward. So if you spend a wee bit of time making sure these are all drawn back, yeah, you'll have less issues about trying to get them to get out of the way, especially when you go to tie off. There's a single fibre there, you can see it. There's always one. Uh, you can pull them off, or draw them back if you wish. Now at this point, you can draw down some of the, 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 the dubbing, just either side, so it blends into it. Because they are a caddis pupa that's about to hatch, so at this, this point just draw the fibres down either side. And then I'm going to stretch it out, take my thread to the front, come over, which is my turn, just let it sit. And then I'll position a pull, a tighten, so that it sits nice. You can see it's a nice cover. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie in some horns at this point. So we've got bronze mallard feathers, fibres. I'm going to take it two out, just bring them 90 degrees, tear them away. You want a reasonable length, you want to be able to see them. I just basically sit them on the top, and as you see I'm tying them in front of the eye. A couple of turns, just, just basically to position them. You can obviously, uh, oops, this one's followed the thread so you can just bring it back up. See a couple of turns there again just to secure it and I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'll obviously separate it but so what I'd like to do is then bring my thread to the back of the eye a couple of turns and you'll see how they're sitting. That's, that's fine. Now what I'm going to do now is basically bring the scud back over and the waist ends of the bronze mallard, just pull them over catch it at the back, I'm going to turn this around so you can see now you want a reasonable head so just make sure it's sitting nice that's fine two or three turns more now I'm going to stretch the thread out towards the eye a couple of turns in front then I'm going to quite finish Tighten up. Trim away your thread. Just bring the skid back forward. Just lay it. There's the waist ends of the horns. Trim them away. And then the length. I mean, you can cut it to suit yourself. So basically, I usually just flip it forward, and then cut in front of the. The eye, straight cut, nothing fancy, and then I just flip it back, and that holds everything that sits there. And there we are, that's the organza caddis pupa. Uh, nice wee pattern. Now, what I want to do is just varnish, use a resin if you want, just I just do the, the head area, just the top and underside.
and there we go. Any long fibres, there's a couple of long ones there. You can take them out. When you brush out with the, the Velcro, you will get longer fibres. But overall, you can see the shape of the, the Cardis pupa and the eye. So, anyway, there we are. Uh, you can see the back. That's what makes the fly. It just looks, I mean, when you see it in the water, it's amazing. And it takes fish, that's the thing. It catches fish, it really does. And uh, I've never got enough of these flies. I've always, I've only got one or two or nine or none, sorry. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. So, and as I say, that's the Organza, or the McPhail Organza, Caddis Pupa. Nice pattern, nice style, so I hope you enjoyed that.